So what is new going on in your field right now that, that is like just exciting the hell out of you? Oh man, really what's exciting to me about this field is how our understanding of these brown dwarfs, I mean, one of the reasons that we study them is just because we're they, they're there and astronomers study anything that's out there. But it turns out that these brown dwarfs are very useful for understanding directly imaged exoplanets. Oh. And you might be like, well, but there's lots and lots of planets. But most of the planets that we know about, we know about thousands of them. Okay. But we know about them indirectly. Like we study the stars right. that the planets orbit and we, f we figure out stuff about the planets based on the stars. Okay. But for a very special type of planet, we can directly image the planet, like we can see the light from the planet. Right. Which to me is just huge. Wait, so awesome. just to clarify, what you're saying is that the thousands of exoplanets that are now in the catalog yeah. are only deduced by inference, yes. not by direct observation. Yes, they're right. in, they're, well, they're direct observations right. of the star. Right, but not, not of the planet not itself. Not typically direct and observations think, of the planet. I don't yeah. think that's a widely known fact. Mm. Yeah, right. we it's we gloss over it because right. we put out these pictures of you know what we think the planets look like, all the Kepler releases and things right. like that, and they're beautiful. But my my shtick is that you know but those, they're like the apartment listing photos that you see on Craigslist. <laughs> like, don't believe them. That furniture is all cardboard and inflatable and wide right. angle lens and blah blah blah. Like they're artist representations of. You know, we do have a good understanding of those planets. Right. We can measure mass, we can measure radius, we can maybe measure some composition and things. So now how do they get those pictures? Are those mathematical compilations of what they should look like? Is it that varies. how they do that? Yeah, it's... it's oh, you mean the, the, those are artists? The artists, yeah, yeah, artists. But they're based on reality, like as yeah. much as possible, you know, the size of the planet and what we think, given the size or the mass of the planet, what we think the composition should be, what we think, you know, if it had an Earth-like atmosphere. Okay. Uh, yeah, if it's in the Goldilocks zone, yeah. then, you, then you throw I, some water in it. I or see. if right, it's right. really over dense and it's a, like an iron planet, and if it's really close in, then it, that half of the planet is going to be heated by the star, and so close it's going to be like star, molten. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, so they're, so they're realistic. They're realistic. Enough, it's just that it is still an interpretation of what that realistic yeah, thing is. Yeah, you're going to get in there, and the you know the place is going to be dirty, and things are going to be a little bit crooked, and cockroaches and stuff. Are you like still that. on the Craigslist <laughs> analogy? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I love the Craigslist. Exoplanet <laughs> real estate. Craigslist of the universe. That's awesome. So but, here's what I, I want to ask you: something that is, uh, and I have no idea what this is, but. Uh, I read uh, a quick article that I didn't get to finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I, I was in the, in, the, in the middle of doing something, but it caught my eye. So mm -hmm. there is maybe an exoplanet. I'm not sure where it is, or maybe it's not an exoplanet. Uh -huh. But in measuring the dip in light in yes. this particular place, okay, because well, uh, I'm so technical. Um, <laughs> well, but, that's what we call it. But, it's the dip. Okay, yeah. so measuring the dip in light. That's the transit method of, transit dis method. of discovering planets, the way that Kepler Space Telescope finds so planets. Normally, that is in, uh, measured in a cyclical time base because yes. there's an orbit. Yeah. But now they found this dip in light someplace that is an, anom is, oh. is an anomaly yeah. because it's not. It's not doing it on a regular time schedule. Are you schedule. talking about Tabby Star? Tabby Star. Alien, yeah. It's, it, but we're not calling it Tabby Star. We're calling it, except that I have a hard time pronouncing her last name, Boyajian. I think Boyab, your last name is Boyajian because it's a... Anyway, it's another it's another <laughs> gender thing because men tend to get things named after their last name and women tend to get things named after their first name. And we're, so we're trying to treat everybody equally and so we're trying to call it Boyajian Star instead of Tabby Star. I gotta tell but you it's something, that, yeah, Tabby, it's, Tabby Star is a lot better than Boyajian, <laughs> Chef Boyajian. 